Hi there, this is Harry and welcome back to my advanced English lessons with Harry and today we're going to look at idioms and idioms connected with the summer. So remember what we're trying to do is to help you to get a better understanding of the English language. We look at vocabulary, we look at pronunciation, phrasal verbs, expressions, everything that will help you to communicate better both in your normal conversational English and also in your business English. So today as I said we're going to look in the lesson at idioms and we're looking at summer idioms. I've got 10 of them. I'm going to give them to you one, one after the other, then go through them and try and give you an explanation. And at the end of this, if you don't understand them, well, just come back to me. I'll give you the address at the end of this particular lesson. Okay. So as I said, 10 summer idioms. So those of you who are just getting into summer or have been through the summer, whatever you, you, you do, if you like the summer, well, these idioms are just for you. Number one, the calm before the storm, the calm before the storm, an Indian summer, dog days of summer, full of hot air, under the sun, a place in the sun, one swallow doesn't make a summer. A cold day in July. To be in hot water. And then finally, to make hay while the sun shines. Okay, so let me go through these one after the other. Now, some of these idioms, they have literal meanings, but they all have specific references to another story. And I'll give you the example of what that means when we when we come to it. Okay, and quite a few of them, I don't think were ahead discovered by anybody who lived in Ireland because some of the references are to really nice times in summer and sometimes in Ireland the weather isn't so kind but anyway we'll look at those another time so let's go one after another the first one the calm before the storm well often in the summertime we get a build-up of heat and a build-up of humidity and you often get really strong thunderstorms particularly in months like July and August so the calm before the storm is a period of quiet weather before the clouds build up the thunder rolls and the lightning strikes okay so the calm before the storm the storm but when we use it in a metaphorical way the calm before the storm could be a time of quiet a uh, reflection in the office when nothing's much is happening, but you know at the end of the month there's going to be some issue because the accounts have to be done or the clients get very busy or the orders start coming in ready for the next month. So you can turn around to your colleagues and say, ah, you better enjoy the next few days. It's the calm before the storm because when the boss comes back, he's going to want action. Okay, so the calm before the storm. Number two, an Indian summer. Well, when we enjoy an Indian summer, it's that period of two or three weeks that extends the summer into perhaps September or even into early October. It happens quite a lot and it's really nice when the, the days are warm. Perhaps they're not as long as the previous months of the summer, but they're warm and dry. So you get that nice Indian summer. So an Indian summer could also be the last few years before you retire. I'm going to enjoy the Indian summer of my working life, a couple of years when I really don't have to do too much, just have to wait around until I get my pension, an Indian summer. So Indian summer, the late period in your life or the, the extended period of weeks during the long summer from August into September, or as I said, even stretching into October. And then dog days of summer. Now, this is a, a particular American idiom. It's not one that I've used so often, but the dog days of summer, it actually comes from Greek and Roman mythology, you know, where they, they used to see lots of activity in the, the sky and you get really, really hot days in July and August and often quite stormy. So they, these really hot times, they refer to them as the dog days, the really tough, hard, sultry days, you know, when there's hardly some 
air, air in the uh, atmosphere, it's hard to breathe, and you're hoping and waiting that a storm will come and clear the atmosphere, so the dog days of summer. Full of hot air. Well, when somebody is full of hot air, they usually talk a lot, but have very little purpose. They don't have any great meaning. They don't make any sense. And they, they don't really contribute in any way. Ah, don't mind him. He's full of hot air. He says this and that. But, you know, he really has no power. He really has no control. He really has no influence on anybody. He's just full of a hot air. He likes to listen to his own voice. And if we take it literally, hot air balloons, they go up. And they go up when you fill the balloon with hot air. They turn on that gas and tss, the hot air rises inside the balloon and the balloon goes up. So when somebody is full of hot air, they're like one of those hot air balloons. They will rise and keep going as long as somebody adds some little bit of energy. But as soon as, soon as you prick, tss, they just disappear. Okay, so to be full of hot air, somebody that really says a lot, but there's no great meaning to it. There's no great value to it. Under the sun. When we're here, when we're using about under the sun, we can use an expression that they have everything, everything under the sun that you could possibly want. So if you're looking for a choice of getaway holidays, you're looking for that getaway weekend or a long holiday, and you're not quite sure where to go. So your partner tells you, well, just look it up on the internet. I mean, they have Everything under the sun, everything you could possibly look for. We can have quiet holidays. We can have relaxing holidays. We could have activity holidays. We could have holidays that are mixed between some relaxation and some activity. We can have one of those getaway holidays. We can have an eco holiday. So whatever you're looking for, you'll find it on the internet. They have everything under the sun. Or if you're looking to try and buy a new pair of shoes or sneakers or something like that, you go to one of these open air markets. Ah, look, you'll find everything under the sun that you could possibly need. It stretches for miles and miles. It's all open air market stalls. There's absolutely everything. And you know, the prices are really, really great. So yeah, you'll get everything under the sun that you could possibly want. So that means everything and anything, everything and anything. So remember, if you enjoy this particular lesson, then like the video, press the button and subscribe to the channel because it really, really helps. Okay, a place in the sun. Well, wouldn't we all like a place in the sun? There used to be a program on TV called A Place in the Sun. And what they used to do is find you a place that you're looking for for your budget. So if you're living in the UK and you fancy the getaway holiday home in the south of Italy, they would go off and they'd find three or four or five properties, show, show you the ones they liked, and then fly you out there to have a look to see with you, with, whether you were interested in buying them. So a place in the sun can literally mean that getaway, that holiday home in the destination of your dreams, okay? But we can use it a little bit metaphorically. Ah, yes, a place in the sun, what we've always dreamed of yeah so it's more a, a dream rather than a reality it's something you can sit back and think about on those long long summer evenings wouldn't it be great to have a place in the sun yeah it yeah, wouldn't it great to retire next year and buy that place in the sun so even if you're only halfway through your um, working life you still have this belief that you would like perhaps to retire early and find and settle for that place in the sun, somewhere where the sun shines nine, ten months of the year, a place in the sun. One swallow doesn't make a summer. Well, at the beginning of the, the summer, we often see swallows. These are the birds that fly around with the little forked tails. They never land. There's something to do with, with the way they fly and the way their wings are made, but they constantly swoop and dive and they eat all of these little insects. And they usually uh, make their nests under the eaves of the house and you'll see them you know, at the beginning of the, the, the summer. So they're very interesting to watch how they make the nest and they make it from mud and it just clings to the underside of your the eave of your house. So uh, if you see one swallow, 
it's a sign that summer is coming, but it doesn't mean that it's actually there because it could be the, the end of spring. So you might have to wait a little bit of time. So we use this expression when somebody has said, OK, I think everything is great now. I think we've got everything sorted. And you say, well, hold on a minute. One swallow doesn't make a summer. We better test this first of all, make sure it works, because if it doesn't work, we'll have to go back and start all over again. So when we use it, Literally, it means, you know, if we see a swallow, perhaps it's a sign that summer is coming. And when we use it metaphorically, one swallow doesn't mean a summer. It means we have to just be a little bit cautious. Don't jump the gun. Don't assume everything's OK until you've tested and checked things. So, you know, you get one good order. It doesn't mean that 20 orders are going to follow. If you get one good order, yeah, you can be happy. You can be content that perhaps there's a sign that business is going to be is going to improve. But it doesn't mean it's going to jump dramatically. So don't count your chickens is what we mean. So one swallow doesn't automatically mean summer is coming. OK, so one swallow doesn't make a summer. A cold day in July. Well, whoever thought of this idiom never lived in Ireland because there are plenty of cold days in July. But what it really means is one cold, a cold day in July means that it'll be something very rare and something very, very unlikely. So somebody could say it'll be a cold day in July before I let you run this business. Yeah. OK, so a father might say to his son that he doesn't really trust his son to run the business. And he would say, it'll be a cold day in July before I let you run this business. It'll be a cold day in July before I leave you, my love. OK, so some man telling his wife that he love her forever and that there's no chance that he would ever leave her. So when we use the expression a cold day in July, it's meaning that something is very, very unlikely to happen. And as I said, unlike you live in, unless you live in Ireland. To be in hot water. Well, when you're in hot water, you have to be careful because you'll burn your feet. OK, and so when you're in hot water, it means you're in trouble, you're in difficulty. So if you make a mistake, you're likely to be in hot water with your boss. If you make a mistake at school and you don't hand in your work and time, you're going to be in hot water with the headmaster. If you're late home and you promised your parents that you'll be home before midnight, it's now two in the morning. Guess what? You're going to be in hot water with your parents when they wake up in the morning or as usual, they're probably awake anyway when you get home. And what time do you call this? Where have you been? OK, so you're really in hot water. And if you borrow your father's car and you scratch it or damage it, well, actually, you're really going to be in hot water. So it's like standing in boiling water without any shoes or, or socks. You're going to burn your feet to be in hot water. And then finally, to make hay while the sun shines. Well, of course, all farmers love this. So at the end of August, when the sun is shining and the hay is yellow in the fields, they want to rush out with their combined harvesters and harvest as much as possible while the sun is shining. Because if the wind comes and the rain comes, well, it's going to flatten the hay and they're not going to get as much yield per acre or per hectare as they should get. So when the, the skies are blue, the clouds are high, the sun is warm, then, yeah, get those combined harvesters out and make hay while the sun shines. So that's the literal meaning of it. And a metaphorical meaning means to take advantage of something while you have the opportunity. OK, so your boss goes away for three weeks every July. OK, so absolutely certain certainty when it comes to the 1st of July, he's gone and he won't be returning until the 20th or the 22nd. So you make hay while the sun shines. You don't work as late as often you do your work, but you you get home at a reasonable time. You spend some time with the, the family. OK, so you make hay while the sun shines. So you take advantage of something that won't always be there. OK, or perhaps during the summer, the roads are really, really quiet and there's lots of parking spaces. So you take the car to work. You're able to park it near the office. There's no penalty or fine for parking there, but you don't have that opportunity for the other 11 months of the year because the spaces are usually occupied by early arrivers. Okay, So you take the opportunity and you take the 
the take advantage of the free spaces and you park your car in these spaces for the month of July. So you make hay while the sun shines. So to take advantage of something while it's there. All right, good, excellent. So they're examples of these particular summer idioms. They're all related to heat or warmth, but they all have a metaphorical meaning and a literal meaning. So I'll just run down through them once more. The calm before the storm. So something is quiet before something erupts. An Indian summer, something that happens late, like a nice period in your life before you retire. Dog days of summer, the really hot, sultry days of the summer. Full of hot air when somebody just talks and talks, but they really have no substance to them. Under the sun, you can get anything you want under the sun. Just name it, you'll be able to get it in that market. A place in the sun, a place to get away from it all. One swallow doesn't make a summer, so don't jump to conclusions just because something has happened. It doesn't mean everything, all the problems are solved, so just be careful. A cold day in July, something that's unlikely to happen, a cold day in July. To be in hot water, to be in some difficulty with somebody about something you've done or something you've forgot to do. And then finally, to make hay while the sun shines, to take advantage of a situation while it's there, because it won't be there forever. Okay, so I'm glad you, you joined me. I hope you've enjoyed those, tried to practice them. They're idioms connected with summer. Some of them are a little bit advanced, but try and see if you can use one or two or even three of those. And if you have any problems with them, come back to me on www.englishlessonviaskype.com. Very, very happy to help you. I'm always glad that you listen. Always glad when you join me. Harry signing off. See you very soon.